Excuse me? Why did you say that? Yeah, the quiz. Well, you had a straight line, uh, straight line problem. That's pretty straightforward. That's something that I feel like um, you should be able to solve without a formula being given. But you shouldn't take what you've just done on the concept inventory as an indication of what the exam will or won't be like. So for example, this was a multiple choice uh, uh, exercise and the exam won't be multiple choice. And this had 10 questions, and the exam won't necessarily have 10 questions. So there will be a lot of differences between what you've just done and the final exam. Um, all right, so if we look at some quick announcements, we've only got today's class and then on Tuesday. And homework 15 is due on Tuesday. That's the depreciation assignment. We have our final exam here in this classroom. And I've gone to great length explaining uh, the fact that we won't have Excel problems on the exam and what the implications are for that. So if, if you missed that discussion, I'd encourage you to listen in on the previous recordings where we talked about that. We're going to finish talking about depreciation today. And we're going to be talking about uh, a new form of de depreciation that actually really reduces the amount of calculations you have to do. So before we get into the new material, are there any questions related to the announcements? All right. Yes. Excuse me? That's right. Yeah. We're going to be here in this classroom on Tuesday. Yeah. We're having class. All right. OK. So this new style of depreciation that we are going to be talking about today uh, has some differences between the declining balance and straight line methods that you've had so far. First of all, in this depreciation system, NACRS, it always goes to zero. Even if the equipment in real life is going to have salvage value, and if you don't completely wear it out until it's thrown away as useless, you still get to capture all of the depreciation according to this method. And so that's, you know, from the accounting perspective, a pretty big difference between the methods that we've looked at so far. And the way that this works is that it has both straight line and double declining balance, this DDB. Last time we looked at uh, declining balance, and if you have 200% declining balance, another word for that is double declining balance. And so um, the, the reason for that transition is that uh, in the tables that are pre-calculated, uh, since they've already categorized how much depreciation you take each year, then there can be a complexity in the underlying calculations that would maybe be a little bit challenging if you were having to do the calculations without the table that they provide. So there's these standardized recovery periods based on the type of equipment that you have. It doesn't actually have to do with the item specific, but how the item is going to be used and what category it's in. I'll show you some uh, classifications in just, uh, just a moment here. And uh, one of the strange things about it, though, is when they assume that you purchase the equipment. Um, remember that uh, we do these tabulations on a year-by-year -year basis. And so in the past, there were some really creative accountants who said, if we buy our equipment at the end of the year, like the last day of the year, then you could take a full year of depreciation just from owning the equipment for one day. And so to avoid that, the, uh, this system says that in the first year of ownership, you can only take a half portion of the depreciation. And I'll show you that on the, de the, the tabulated um, values that we're going to be using for problem solving, that the half-year convention assumes a mid-year purchase just to avoid uh, people trying to purchase the equipment at the end of the year and then taking a full year of depreciation. You can still sort of game the numbers a little bit because uh, you could purchase the item on the last day and then you get a, a half year of depreciation for that, but it sort of reduces the incentive for um, uh, too much abuse. There's no spreadsheet function that makes it simply uh, simple to use these tables, although you can put the tables themselves into the spreadsheet and do the calculations afterwards. So the first step in problems like this is to find out what category your equipment is in. And you can see that the, uh, the recovery periods we're going to use here is the middle column, where it says GDS. We're going to use the GDS recovery periods. And there are some different interpretations between how long they expect the equipment to actually last in general and how quickly you can uh, depreciate the value of the item. From 
a tax perspective, you want this number to be as low as possible. Because the lower the number of years you can depreciate over, that means that you can bring the value of the item to the present. And depreciating it quickly means it's more valuable than depreciating over a really long time when future, valued, future value of dollars are lower. So take, for instance, if you purchase equipment that's supposed to be used for mining, it assumes that equipment that's used for mining, according to the GDS recovery period, is going to last for seven years. And at the end of seven years, it has no useful life. Now that may or, not be tr may or may not be true. You may be purchasing equipment that is much more durable than having a seven-year useful life. And that's great. You, know, you get to depreciate it quickly and then continue to, the continue to use the item even after on paper it has no value. But sometimes, uh, automobile, for example, they assume that the automil automobile maybe is lasting for five years, but if your ownership period is less than that, or if it wears out more quickly, then that's actually bad for you. So the first thing for problem solving is you find out how many years according to the type of item it is. And then you go to this table, and going back to the example of mining equipment, let's say that you buy mining equipment, so it's seven years. That means you go to this table, and it tells you the fraction of the value that's depreciated during the seven-year recovery period. But there's a strange thing. You'll notice that for a seven-year recovery period, there are actually eight rows. So the reason for that is the half-year convention that I was mentioning, is it assumes that you purchase the item at the middle of the first year. So there are actually seven years. It's just that in the first year and in the last year, you're owning it for half of the time. So you own it for half of year one and half of year eight. And that's why the numbers are a little bit lower. So you'll notice for the five-year period, for example, you get 20% of the value depreciating in year one, and then 32% of the value depreciating in year two. So the second year of ownership is actually more valuable from a depreciation standpoint because you're getting a larger, fracture, a larger fraction of the depreciation up front. Uh, but if it had been a full year at this first rate, then it would have been 40% because if you're doubling the half year amount. So in today's in-class exercise, what I'd like you to do is take a look at the example of uh, buying a bus. And if you're spending 238,000 dirhams on a bus, that's the initial book value, the book value at year zero. Um, well, in the past I've taught this using Excel, but you're not using Excel today. You're just going to do this one on paper. What I'd like you to do is find the depreciation and book value for each year. It's actually very easy to do. The depreciation is you just multiply the initial purchase price by the fraction that's provided. So for 238,000 dirhams, that's the initial book value. So what you need to do is find out what category it's going to be in and what is the recovery period. Then multiply the initial purchase price by the, uh, the fractions, and that gives you the depreciation amount for each year. But then the book value is going to be the accumulation of depreciation amounts. So in year zero, it's the full purchase price. In year one, the book value is going to be the purchase price minus the, the depreciation amount for that year. And the amount is the fraction times the purchase price. So I think you get the idea. And uh, it makes this method really straightforward where there's less argument between the government for tax purposes and the accountants. So that's sort of why it was implemented. If you add up all of these fractions, you'll notice that for each column, it adds up to one. So that means that at the end of it, you've depreciated all of the value. So that's why they all add up to one, regardless of whether it's three, five, seven, ten, however many years. And so what that means is that all of the value is lost at the end of the depreciation period. So it's a bus, 
which has a five-year recovery period, which means you're actually going to be taking depreciation during six, uh, six calendar years or six tax years. It's just that the first year and the last year, you're only getting half the depreciation amount for those years. Okay, so here are the fractions that we took from the table for the GDS method. Now, capital D, that means depreciation. And that's how much of the value is being lost each year. And if you multiply the initial book value of 238000 by the fraction of depreciation, then you get the amount of depreciation. So this is a fraction. This is the amount in terms of uh, dirhams that's being lost. And then here is the book value for each year. It starts off with its original purchase price. And you can see it's going to go all the way down to zero. And uh, the reason for that is that the book value for all equipment depreciates to zero according to this method. There's never a salvage value or a market value at the end of the depreciation life. This value? For year two, I multiplied 0.32 by the initial purchase price. That's right. Because what these fractions represent is how much of the initial purchase price is lost each year. That's why they're getting progressively smaller, is that there's less and less value remaining at the end of the life of the item. Are there other questions? All right. Oh, well, we're out of time. I'll see you on Tuesday, and I hope you have a good day.